Welcome to the Inspired by Adventure podcast, bringing you the adventure across the airwaves. Here's your host, Cole Watkins. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone, for another episode of Inspired by Adventure podcast. My name is Cole Watkins, and I'm your host. Today, we are lucky to have Michelle Westmoreland joining us. How are, how are you, Michelle? Doing great here in uh, chilly Seattle area. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. So um, we're really interested to hear your call. And uh, let me read a bio for you guys on uh, on Michelle, which is a quite uh, long and lengthy but accomplished bio. <laughs> Hopefully I get it right this time. So Michelle is a freelance photographer with a variety of ph- photographic skills. Westmoreland Images LLC operates from her home in Redmond, Washington. Michelle has created a vast library of imagery from around the world. Although she produces commercial marketing images for resorts and the scuba diving industry, she is especially passionate about conservation and is proud to be a senior fellow of International League Conservation Photographers. In 2016, she won the Fellow of the Year Award from the ILCP. Her underwater and cultural photography has gained international recognition. Michelle understands the need to tell a visual story, whether it covers exotic locations or the wonders of the natural world. In 2019, Michelle was awarded the Lifetime Explorer Award from the Sea of Change Foundation. She is also a fellow national of the prestigious Explorers Club, a member of the Society of Women Geographers, Wings World Quest, the North American Nature Photography Association, and was inducted into the Women's Divers Hall of Fame in 2011. In addition, Michelle received the Fellowship Award from the NAMPA at the Biennial Summit in 2015. Much of her imagery has appeared in national and international publications, and Michelle has won several awards for her imagery, including grand prize in the Papua New Guinea underwater category, the Environmental Photography Invitational, Photo District News, and many others. She is proud to be in- included in the book Adventures Dreams and Adventures Lives by Jason Schoonover, and her book Ocean Duets was published in 2006 and is focused on the beauty of the underwater world. As a speaker, Michelle has given a variety of lectures on culture, the marine environment, and photography workshops. Locations she is most proud to share her stories include keynote speaker of Nampa, Blue Ocean Film Festival, Explorer Club Sea Stories, the Pinyao International Photography Festival in China, and Museum of Fine Art in St. Petersburg, Florida. Michelle is especially proud of a documentary film released in 2017, The Head Hunt Revisited, with brush, canvas, and camera. The film has appeared in various film festivals and proud to have won Best Foreign Document- Documentary in the La Femme International Film Festival in Los Angeles. Okay. Second, time, second time's a charm. You guys should have seen that first run. <laughs> Is everybody right. asleep yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Michelle. Um, one, one thing that um, you listeners have probably seen her her stuff without even knowing it is Michelle hops on a lot of our uh, uh, our our yachts and also our destinations around the world and takes all these uh, great um, promotional photographs topside and also shoots underwater uh, but a lot of the things that you see in our uh, our, our catalog uh, come from Michelle's lens yes um, it um it's a delight. It's a, it's a lot more work than people think. Mm-hmm. Um, I get a lot of questions from people because I'm, I'm known for underwater and cultural and conservation work. Um, why, why do you photograph yachts and resorts and things like that? And it's for, in my mind, it's, it's pretty simple. One, it's challenging and fun. Um, yeah, because you really have to spot, you have to know your light. Uh, I learn a lot of lighting techniques from doing these kind of marketing shoots. And then I get to meet neat people. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I'm on board any of the yachts or, or you know, it, it's a good chance to engage with, with the guests that are on board. Um, many of them are kind enough to play models uh, in a lot of my photos. I have some people that go on trips when they know I'm shooting just so, so they can be models and we all have fun diving and, and it, you know, enjoying the experience. So there's a lot of things involved and that's why I shoot marketing shots. You know, there's just, it's, it's always that test, you know, each, each yacht is different. Um, 
you know, you go into a cabin, you go into the salon, they're all different, so you got to plan it out. And I like solving those kind of problems. It, it's funny, you, you, yeah, you describe it there as a problem because it is kind of like putting together a puzzle, making sure you got the right light. I, I know myself because I've been asked why I was on a handful of our yachts to take a few shots. And um, it, it, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy to take a picture and make it look, you know, as good as it can be in these magazines like you do. So we're really happy to, to, to get all of your stuff. So we're not using <laughs> Cole's iPhone stuff. <laughs> But let's let's and let's. You know, there's some great iPhone, d- different cell phone shots out there. I, you know, it's not <laughs> diminishing it, but yes, <laughs> they have come a long way. That's for sure. Yes, but, they let, have. but let's learn. Let's learn a little bit about you and and your upbringing, where you're where you're raised, and and you know what came first, the the love for the ocean or the love for photography. Wow. Um, actually, I grew up. I was a Navy brat. Um, Grew up in the East Bay area of, of San Francisco. And, uh, but then I, you know, I kind of moved on to different things when I graduated from high school, got involved. I spent over 20 years in real estate of all things. Mm-hmm. Um, and specialized mostly in uh, commercial real estate, doing site location for different franchise organizations. And then I got recruited and my hobby back then was photography. I had a little dark room. Of course, everything was filmed back then. And I used to have a lot of fun in the dark room. Um, the sport for me in Northern California was snow skiing. And okay. then I got, yeah, then I got recruited by Burger King Corporation <clears throat> to work in there, what they call non-traditional development. So I had to move to, to Miami got relocated there. And that was in 1984. Hmm. And my brain kept thinking, okay, now what am I going to do? I don't exactly have Mount Shasta behind me anymore. Um, So I took up scuba diving. And once I did that in Florida, the Keys and throughout the uh, Caribbean, starting out with an Econus system, I said, that's it. You know, um, you know, it's marine life, it's underwater, it's scuba diving. And it's underwater photography. So that's basically how I got my start was, you know, through a corporate relocation. Wow. Thank thank you, Burger King, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, their headquarters was there. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it was a great way to, you know, it, being involved in corporate industry was a great way for me to figure out. I knew that I didn't want to read hundred page lease documents for the rest of my life and negotiate them. No, 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 no. Um, so it, what it did is give me the skills and that to put together a business plan so that I could leave the corporate real estate world and, and make my living and, and, where my passion was and that was in diving and underwater photography so yeah it took me about five years but wow you know pretty pretty fortunate during those days to be able to to do that and make a a good living at it so i've been shooting professionally for almost 30 years and is that when you started westmoreland image images was that right away or did that kind of form later after you yeah i was i was married um, so I worked together with my um, previous husband, mm-hmm. and um, but that was a very long time ago. And uh, when I went off on my own, of course, Westmoreland Images was formed. Okay. I married, uh, remarried to a wonderful man named George. He's awesome. <laughs> he is my he is my photo assistant my proper and styler when it comes to spotting things, when I'm doing the marketing shoots on the vessel and my age appropriate model. I was going to say, I feel like I know, I feel like I know George from uh, the, all the images I see of him. And I feel like me and him have had multiple uh, trips together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got it down now. He's, you know, and, and he, you know, also says, I, you know, he packs all the equipment because, you can imagine how much there is. Sure. So it takes the two of us to bring all the lighting stands and equipment and things that are necessary to do these shoots. Yeah. Well, what's the most recent shoot you've, you've done for us? Oh, sadly, a year ago, December. 
because of you know all yeah. of the things that happened in the past year but that was the coral mm -hmm. and the, it was the first time george got to experience um that part of the world and and that kind of marine life um it it never ceases to amaze me never um with the mantas and the dolphins and the fish and the sharks yeah no it was pretty spectacular do you have any other trips uh, already on the books that you're coming up with us? Well, we're we're looking at Turks and Caicos. Okay. And, uh, that'll be a really great way to get, you know, because I'll have to do some practicing here at home. It's mm -hmm. been a bit. You know, I'll make okay. sure my equipment is all operating. Um, and But I, I am so... I've been on the vessel before a long time, a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's it's a beautiful boat and I am so looking forward to jumping off that dive platform. I hear you. To the water. Yeah. 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 It's been a long time for everyone, it seems, but we're happy to be op operating and um, everything moving, moving along and everyone that all our customers so far have been very happy with the, uh, the, uh, the, the return COVID test that we're, we're having done at the end of the week. So everything's finally starting to kind of get back to normal. It seems. Well, and, and Aggressor has paid such attention to to that kind of operations and how, you know, dealing through this pandemic and um, and doing it in an appropriate way. So I appreciate that. And I'll let you know when I get back from Turks and Caicos. I am getting my second dose on Friday, though. So okay, good. Good. Uh, good yeah. Well, um, so uh, let's see. We do have a, some, a PowerPoint. Is this, is this the time you want to go ahead and move into that? Or do you, you want to discuss more of, yeah. So, um, so uh, some of you guys may be, <laughs> I should have done this at the beginning of the call. Some of you guys may be listening to this call on uh, the audio version of the podcast, but if you want to move over to the video version, it will be on Facebook, YouTube, uh, and our podcast site uh, or podcast page of our website where you can see uh, some of this PowerPoint that Michelle's about to, walk us through here. Yeah, let me start out and we can chat along the way because I'm going to show a variety of images, obviously, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll tell it, tell you all about why. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and go into slideshow from beginning. Do you have the full screen up there now? Uh, no? you know what? I don't see your screen, but let's see. I might have to give you quick co-host power. Okay, now let me. That's what it is. All right, now you should be able to share your screen. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, can you, there we go. Let me get it from the beginning so there's larger images. And um, yeah, so this is, you know, even from this, this shoot on the Cayman Aggressor, yes, I got, you know, I have my collection of Aggressor shirts. <laughs> and yeah, but it, it's really delightful. The crews work so hard mm -hmm. to help me. And I, in a lot of times I take a look, what do they have when it comes to food preparation or whatever, they pretty much have it down. Um, but then there's friends I develop and who pose for me, um, Setting and looking at the right time of day, especially for these exterior shots, is really, really important because that's the ambience you get when you're on board the boat. And so why not show it off um, and the service and everything else? So but it, again, it takes, you know, the lighting setup, um, people to look as natural as possible. Uh, we're, and we're, we're always laughing and, and making jokes. So it, it winds up being a lot of fun for the, for the guests who agree to model for me. Mm -hmm. But then this was last year, this was my last trip on Socorro. And there is nothing more amazing than that big marine life. I mean, you know, it is Jurassic Park of the Pacific. It's, everything is big there everything's in great numbers and i got an 8 to 15 millimeter lens a few years ago and i can't seem to let go of of using this eight millimeter on on that particular lens and get that circular view 
But what most people don't know until they watch me work underwater is that that dome port, and I have to be very careful because I want to be respectful of the of the marine life. Mm-hmm. But that dome port is within inches of the nose of one of those animals. Really? Um, yeah, that's how wide that gets. Hmm. And um, yeah, the octopus is great because they always get curious. They see their reflection. They see you. I mean, you can't get better than that. And then over, you know, with the sharks, the white tip sharks, mm-hmm. those guys just tuck in and, and you can just, even if you're not photographing, just sitting there and watching it is pretty darn amazing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, you know, I mean, most people go who aren't divers go, aren't you scared of them? And it's like, no, not at all. <laughs> They're not interested in you. I think one of the things I really love to do now, the image um the color image is from Socorro and these are some of the biggest dolphins I've ever seen um and they will come right up to you and stare at you stare in your face and wow. yeah now it's just amazing and especially with their size now sometimes they're kind of remarked at they could be the demon dolphins because you, you do have to pay attention you can be mesmerized by them but all of a sudden you look at your depth gauge and it's like, just follow me, follow me. <laughs> uh, so, but, you know, quite an exciting experience. And, and by the size, you can see all the marks on these animals because they live in the middle of the Pacific. They come in to Arriva, Hijedos and San Benedicto and Socorro. And it's very competitive there. So the bite marks from their uh, breeding and fighting and dominance is pretty clear on these animals. Hmm. I like to plan um, because I used to do dark room work and shoot on film in the old days. I really wanted to get back into more black and white. I mean, I have drawers full of black and white um, slides and that that I've taken, but I. I don't want everything always in color and the black and white a lot of times tells a different story. So the spinner dolphins in black and white are from Kona and um, on board the Kona aggressor. And I knew that because they also come in close that I could really capture something and make it simple enough so that I can convert it to black and white. Now, George had a great time. These dolphins were right in his face and they were playing and coming in. And you know what? They only have so much interest in their in their playtime with humans. And when they this one big male came by George and just flew by his face and pooped right in his face and says, <laughs> I'm done, I'm going away. And off they went. They do their own thing. Um, yeah. So <laughs> We were laughing for quite a while. <laughs> and again, oops, did you have a question, Cole? I, I did. So so how do you know when you want to turn something into black and white? Is there something that distinct about the image that you, you see that you that makes you want to turn it black and white? Contrast and simplicity. That's first and foremost in my mind. Um you know, if you have a busy background that's colorful, I'm certainly not going to isolate that out. That's pretty tough to do, but there are sharp points and it's a matter of practicing, you know, um, just take some simple images and, and, and look at it when you're doing your post-processing. And sometimes you can learn from that in converting, see how it goes, try the contrast. But I, I personally, and um, any kind of black and white versus color or forms of art, which photography is, um, is subjective. You know, you and I may not like the same things, but I, I kind of like the black and white over the, over the uh, color version. Mm. And then, of course, there's, you know, I mean, all the experiences with Rex, you know, from, from the Caymans to the Red Sea and that those make for really, really interesting compositions and formations. And for divers, it's, it's, um, 
Yeah, it's very intriguing to dive racks. And of course, that is my age appropriate model, <laughs> George, <laughs> in that scene. But uh, I really like the forms. And again, using the eight millimeter on the eight to 15 millimeter lens has its distinct advantages for um, filling up space and being able to get that wide view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's, then there's one of my favorite, this is one of my favorite trips of all times. I was shooting the Red Sea, which was pretty amazing. I've done that a couple times, but I like engaging and seeing what's going on on the surface as well. And this was a time I got to spend on the Nile cruise boat. Um, amazing, amazing vessel with an incredible crew. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, I, I really, um, I just couldn't believe that I was only there for a few days. I just wanted to stay because it was that beautiful. But I like looking at other things, whether it's the early morning colors and the balloon rides or lifestyle for the people. And I think that's something we as divers um, tend to forget is the humanity. And you'll see this as we go on in a few other pictures. You know, what's the lifestyle? Um, what's really going on in that area? We learn so much from that. Mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the people's needs? So that was a pretty amazing and amazing experience for me. It was, it was the Nile cruise. And of course, the guide, uh, Emil Top. He, he just, he is not only so knowledgeable about all the different um, locations that you visit. Um, he just has the greatest smile and the greatest way of, of engaging you to learn about his culture. Um, again, I'm, I'm at different temples and I always ask permission. A lot of times in different areas, they, uh, you know, people will ask for payment. Um, but when you when you have somebody like Emil that can help you, uh, getting some of these shots is wonderful. Some resonate better in color, and others I convert. I knew immediately when I shot the gentleman with that light source pointing down on him that that would be just translate so well in black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, would you mind going back? Because when we had our preliminary call, we talked a little bit about the uh, rule of third with the photo there on the left, and how you how it doesn't necessarily matter the where the the the, the uh, focus point is height wise. Can you talk about about that a little bit? I, I found that really interesting on our first call. Well, the yeah rule of thirds. You know, there are times when you want your subject centered, mm -hmm. but for the most part. I'm not one of those kind of people. I, you won't, unless it's a real tight portrait um, where I have to have eyes in focus and that. I like the rule of thirds where you divide up and in most cameras will have a grid that you can see through the lens. Um, I think it tells a better story, not to mention that it gives that possibility, especially for me, uh, if I print this or or a particular image that's released properly and legally model released can be used for um, for layouts. I mean, you know, as a full time photographer, you're always thinking of ways. Will the text fit? Will it not? How will it look is a is an art print. And most people engage more if you use that rule of thirds and not always center everything. Thank you. And then it's just taking a look. I mean, this is um, a, a particular, let me find my, my description here. Because um, this was in Egypt. And it's a, it's a special, let's see, it's the Egyptian Russian Friendship Monument, also known as the uh, Lotus Tower. And look at the formation. What I was intrigued with was the style of it. Again, looking at other things. And then from the outside, 
once I started walking through the memorial of the Lotus Tower, I looked up and I said, whoa, that's pretty cool. So I laid down on the, on the ground shooting straight up to oh. get that form. And um, yeah, is this crazy little blonde with a big camera, you know, you kind of get a few chuckles from people around the area, but it's, it's really fun. Experiment, try, um, you know, get, get in those weird positions that might give you something different. And again, I chose black and white because of the contrast in the formation. Interesting. Back again. And now going to some of the most, you know, famous temples, um, this, the black and white, which really looks good in color as well is Abu Simbel. And that is a very, very special place that you can go visit um, with the cruise and the experience. And, and com again, combining diving the Red Sea and then going on a Nile cruise, you, you cannot get, you know, I don't mean this, this is from the heart and not a sales pitch. This is really one of the coolest um, because you get that double experience with knowledgeable people. Um, the photo to the right had to be in color. And that's one you'd mentioned before about the rule of thirds as well. I would have preferred, you know, it would have been nice if I, if I had the woman looking into the frame as opposed to out of the frame, but the color in her stance, she gave me permission to take her photo, but um, I can't use it for commercial purposes. Uh, and I always want to respect that, but what a great exterior. And it's just, I, I couldn't stop. I mean, you know, my hard drives were all full by the time I got home from the Red Sea <laughs> and from the Nile cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Back underwater, oh, Red Sea and, and then Komodo on the opposite sides of the world, practically. And I love really taking a look at faces of all of these creatures. Most places, if you're, you know, just take your time, be patient. Um, let a lot of these animals just stay, breathe slow. And a, a lot of times you can get some pretty amazing shots. Um, I love the flathead head. I think he's pretty funny from Komodo. Yeah. The other shot um, from the Red Sea has been, has been used quite a bit. So again, if you're looking at the framing of that photo, where can I put text? Can that be a double page spread? Can it be? So yeah, I'm always thinking of that when I'm, even when I'm diving. Wow. Yep. Ah, let's see. This is, oh, let me see where I know where the right shot is. Yeah. The big guy is from the brothers over in, in Egypt and that school of fish, usually they're pretty dip, deep, um, the big eyes are. And what you really don't notice when you're diving unless you have lights is that how colorful they can be. Hmm. And uh, yeah, you just have to give them some time and some room. Uh, this was a nice grouping. To the right, what can you say? A frog fish, that's from Roatan. Hmm. Uh, when I was there for a shoot and a frogfish in a purple uh, space uh, sponge vase or a vase sponge. Yeah. Um, I, you know, that was a, I was just moving along and looked to my right and, and saw this little face peeking out of the vase sponge. And yeah, that kept me entertained for about a half an hour. That makes me think he knew you were coming. Yeah. We got a photographer so, coming. I'm going to get up on this nice little sponge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, let, me, let me give you the right position here. I'll move this leg over here and spin and move around. Yeah, he, he actually turned around quite a few times. It's like when you said some some customers get on the boat, uh, get on the yachts when they know you're going because they want to be models. This frogfish in Rotan knew you were coming. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Oh, man. You know, um, the Maldives, mm -hmm. it's been one of my favorite places. I've been there six times or so. Yeah. Um, there is 
there's a lot of beauty. I think one of the things from a, from a being a guest is on one of the vessels is getting to one of those tiny little islands. And I was watching the crew getting ready to do the evening, uh, uh, the dinner beach barbecue. And I went, oh, this is going to be way too much. And so they were doing sand sculptures. They were setting the table. The chef was out there. And the one thing I always watch for when I do these type of shots is what time of day I'm going to take this photo um, to really share the experience with the viewer. And that's there is what they call the peak time at dusk and dawn. And close to the equator, you may get 15 minutes to shoot it to get that blue sky in the background mm -hmm. dark enough. Um, it's the twilight time. Uh, so you better move quickly and you got to get your shots, whether you're doing an interior or an exterior. But um, the guests were really patient with me. I said, no, no, don't sit down. Don't mess up the table yet. Um, <laughs> so I could, I could get my, they were all really great. It was, it was pretty special. Um, and then you go underwater. I mean, the Maldives have always, in my uh, experience, is a place where the schools of fish tend to come in really close. Um, I've had them swirl around me so tightly, whether they're fusiliers or these striped um, grunts, uh, come in so tightly you can't even see through them. It's like having a tornado around you. Mm -hmm. um, really pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. And then of course the, the reefs, and I'll go on to the next one, they're very well known for their soft coral walls. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Um, they did, you know, like a lot of places along the equator have been impacted at some point or another with coral bleaching, but one of the first species to come back is, is generally the soft corals. And um, they can come back even stronger than before, thank goodness, because we're so impacted all the time. You know, I speak of conservation and and I always get concerned about events that happen that impact the reefs because we would be tortured if we lost this kind of amazing um, visual and dive experience. I'll have to get back to the Maldives again. I think this was this was shot two years ago, again with George as my model. Ah, okay. Safari Lodge. Ah, the Safari Lodge. Yeah. Um, that's what makes, you know, we went from the Maldives to the Safari Lodge in Sri Lanka. I had never been to Sri Lanka before. I would go back to Sri Lanka many times. And especially again, you know, you can go diving and then spend a week at the Safari Lodge. Um, again, there's that twilight hour and I'd better be ready. Um, and it's amazing because you can, you don't have to be a photographer, just go sit out on the lawn and, and take a look at the sky and the, and the building and, and just enjoy it. Uh, it's the same with the, the different um, really wonderful tents that they have. This one along the river, and uh, which was a pretty amazing setup. And I think, Cole, you asked me a question once before about that shoot, didn't you? Yeah, I actually, yeah, when I got that image of you two on the porch, um, I knew it was going to be something we were going to be using on social, on, on all accounts, and it's gonna, it was going to be in the magazine, probably one of the main images on the website. Um, but yeah, the, the way the, the sun comes through there is beautiful. I didn't know if you took this, I couldn't tell if this was a morning shot or an afternoon shot. I would say in, in that this was probably the toughest photo shoot, um, I have ever done because we had a limited amount of time, but we were the only ones in the camp. So, you know, how am I going to set some of these things up? It was it was quite the challenge. And that photo I had already noticed from day one, waking up early in the morning. This is a, this is a and, and you can view this any way you want, sunset, sunrise. 
still, you know, a lovely place to view the sun coming up. And I could see it in the morning and see how it was crackling through the trees mm -hmm. and said, okay, there's my shot. There's what I need to include. And, but there was just George and myself. And although the, the whole staff and Marlon, who is the guide and that helped out because we had to get up very early in the morning for me to set up and, and all of that. And then George and I set ourselves in the frame. I had my camera on the tripod set on uh, to shoot a frame every 10 seconds. Now, it's not easy even when you have two people who are kind of experienced. It's like, George, lean in, reach out and touch my hand. You know, there's a lot of images that I throw away because either we got scrunchy faces or whatever. So photographing yourself in, as a model in that scene is, is not the easiest thing to do. But fortunately, caught it and caught it, caught the sun coming through, you know, with that nice burst of light coming through the trees. So, yeah, that one made me happy. So that's in our scrapbook for us too as well. Of course, all I have to do is open up a magazine and see ourselves a lot. <laughs> Again, what an experience. Marlon, who was our, our guide, just amazing um, knowledge when it comes to wildlife. And, and I believe he has a PhD as well, does he? I'm, I'm not, I, I can't quite remember, but we did have him on a podcast. A fascinating guy. I think he's actually, he's right. getting his PhD. So I think he was studying uh, right around that time. Yeah. And it, what a great guy. And a, a lot of fun, knowledgeable, gets you out to see a lot of the different wildlife. Again, paired in with one of the, one of the trips. You, you can't get better than this. I mean, the, the Asian elephants that are there, mm -hmm. um, you know, they have some great programs um, available and, and Marlon speaks to, what is it, Elephant Orange, one of the projects to protect the um, Asian elephant in Sri Lanka in that's many right. of these areas. Yeah, yeah. And that's through, um, through the foundation. And, you know, who, who doesn't want to see a leopard mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka? And you generally get to see them. One of the tougher animals for at least I didn't get to see them is the sloth bear. Okay. Um, yeah. And they're pretty good size. So yeah, I kind of have a focus to go back and, and work on that, but more of the, of the wildlife and it doesn't end with, it's not just the leopard. Yeah. They're kind of the signature, but I got to tell you some of the bird life there is absolutely amazing when you get around those ponds the species from hornbills to different adjunct um, storks which are actually endangered um, there's just a lot of activity in that area and it's and the work being done for conservation is is admirable quite admirable yeah tell us about this shot because i know the leopards are so elusive how did you get this this is such a great shot being quiet. <laughs> and, you didn't tie some, uh, some uh, raw T-bones to George, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and it was Marlon going, shh, shh, okay. stay, still, stay still, don't move, when they, especially when they stop the vehicle. Because mm -hmm. Marlon can spot uh, wildlife and leopards, which blend in with the background uh, amazingly well, mm -hmm. and he can spot them. I mean, that's, that's what he does. That's what he knows. And you just kind of have to be patient and wait. Don't make too many quick movements. They'll just move off and say, you know, bye, I'm out of here. Um, and then when they look straight at you, oh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's a great shot. But there's, you know, there's other things, you know, from the, the elephant herds, which are, you know, the, the territory is amazing. Um, you know, the different park set, settings. And I, I forget how to pronounce Miniara. Miniara. Um, the elephant, yeah. Mm -hmm. Miniara, which is a, an incredible area for, for the elephant herds who come in and to clean. And the babies, the baby elephants are way too cute. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, they really are. But then you get um, a chance to, if you're tough enough to go to Sigaria or Lion's Head Rock. 
And it is a climb that is, can test your skills. You know, of course you can stop along the way and rest, but the photograph I took here, just I'm, I'm still on the search for this person who had this amazing tattoo on his leg as I was following him up these steep stairs. Cause there's what, 1250 steps to the top of Sigaria. Wow. Uh, Lion's Rock, yeah, it's it's pretty hefty. Mm -hmm. And this tattoo is an hourglass and it says nothing lasts forever. So I'm still on the search to find this gentleman uh, because this is really, it, it kind of says it all. Um, and when you reach the top of Lion's Head, you know you've done something special. Um, pretty impressive. The views from the top of that, of that rock, um, which was of course a temple in the old days and and Marlon explains the, you know, the significance of the rock. Again, I love the cultural side of it as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just is never ending. Um, there are times there are, because uh, Sri Lanka is so culturally diverse, you've got Buddhism, you've got Hinduism, you have Muslims, so you have all these different things and you never know what's gonna happen if you're out, uh, even just driving from point A to point B, what is going to happen if there's a ceremony. So uh, I'm always keeping my eyes out for that interaction. Mm -hmm. And then it's back to the Caymans. <laughs> and yeah, might as well end on the Caymans, right? Uh, I'd love to get back there because, you know, I mean, diving the Kitty Wake, that's a big deal for everybody. I mean, anybody that dives Cayman has, has been on Kitty Wake and some, you know, the other wrecks. I was very fortunate um, to have a nice still day and that's the yacht in nice clear water, nice reflection showing through. So, um, and the colors are amazing with the sponges. Mm -hmm. there's, there's always something to investigate. And if you've dived it before, um, it's never the same twice. So there's always changes going on and things that are really valuable. Um, I'm going to end on this note because, you know, what, what's been uh, the highlight this year um, with the Netflix film and, and that My Octopus Teacher? They are a teacher. And this is from the Bahamas, but you can see brief octopus all over. And mm -hmm just sit and observe. Um, and that's what I want to tell all the viewers everywhere. doesn't matter where you go. Don't rush around the reef. Take a look around the reef. And if there's something interesting, take, you know, breathe easy and, and observe because there's a lot of times it's mind blowing. I've had octopus come up and touch my camera systems, me, you know, throw sand at me. Um, so any kind of experience to me is, is pretty incredible. Um, and that's, that's what I get from traveling around the world. And I, you know, uh, I've been shooting the aggressor fleet for what, 10 years now. Okay. That's about, yeah, it's about 10 years. So I, every day is a new day. Yeah. I can't wait to get back Turks and Caicos June. <laughs> I know. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with us. That was some really great uh, photos and insight and uh, really exciting stuff. What would you say is harder to capture? A top side shot where you're for marketing images on the yacht or something underwater? Or both. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's, there's always, it's the excitement of, of shooting, you know, either type. Uh, it, it's the problem solving, it's the challenges, or maybe it just happens, especially with marine life. It just happened that that dolphin swam by George and pooped in his face. <laughs> you know, it's like, it just so happened that that giant manta comes right over your head. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just, some you know you develop your own interests and category of interests and there's so much to learn of course i've been shooting for 30 years or longer if you want to count my old dark room days mm -hmm. uh, prior to diving uh, so you know as keep experimenting um 
but remember just because you have a card that might take you know thousands hold thousands of Im images mm -hmm. um and this was sent to me by another photographer from the old film days when you had you know the the large um system to um a housing that on each one of those film only had so many frames right 36 frames on a roll of film or whatever mm -hmm. and now you can shoot 2400 you know frames on a die yeah but i i'll bet you you only get no matter what it is you're shooting there's only six good ones in the whole lot that's just the way it is a lot so, of time time editing huh and then choosing you know i i think that's one thing that that when digital really started taking on and I was switching over from film, I used to enjoy, you know, getting my hundred rolls of processed uh, slide film in the little boxes. It was like Christmas time and standing at uh, a slide table going through them mm -hmm. and doing the editing that way. And so people have always asked me, well, isn't it, isn't it much cheaper now? You don't have to, you know, haul around film, buy film, pay for film. No, it is not. Digital is six times more expensive. Is it? Wow. Yeah. Yes. Because you, you're constantly having to update programs. You have to get new equipment. Um, the, it's very labor intensive uh, because of the editing time. You're absolutely right. It's a lot more editing to do. And then when you're done with that, you've got post-production work. Yep. Uh, you either had a good slide or a bad slide and threw it away. Okay. You, know, you do HDR now digitally, you do all sorts of things. So it's, it's very, it's like I said, I, I was watching my PL, my profit and loss statement to see how the impact of digital would hit the business. And yeah, it's six times more expensive. Wow. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Michelle, I guess in, in closing, um, there's one one last thing I wanted to ask you about uh, that that was here on your bio. It was it was Michelle's statement? Could you read that to us or tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I wrote this quite a few years ago, and it sticks with me. It hasn't changed, and it's my own statement about the photography and quote, and I'll quote myself. I've had the privilege of photographing marine life since 1984. Each dive gave me new and dramatic experiences from the tiny creatures that hide in the coral to magnificent marine mammals that give our world balance. It is an environment where new discoveries are made every day. I believe in the power of imagery to motivate stewardship and protection of the fragile underwater world. It is equally important to connect with the indigenous peoples of the world. Man is, in fact, a part of nature. So that's my mantra. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, Michelle, I appreciate you being on today and uh, telling us a little bit about yourself and, and showing us some of your slides. Is there anything else you want to talk about or discuss or anything? I think I, I think I've said I said enough. No. <laughs> But any words I'm of encourage, be, encouragement for uh, the, the new photographers that are out there? Yeah, there's always opportunities. I've been really fortunate to be able to mentor young people in photography. There's some um, stunning people within um, International League of Conservation Photographers. Mm -hmm. I've worked, I've, I'm mentoring for a young mm -hmm. woman who specializes in kelp and she's a scientist as well, but she has a great eye uh, through girls who click. Anyway, I love working with the youth. Now they're beating me up on the tech, but uh, that's okay. You know, it's, it's, you know, that mantra kind of connects. If I can teach that one person to take a, a, a look a different way, that makes me smile. So, and I, I'm, I'm ready. I need back in the water. The gills are too dry. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for being on. We really appreciate you taking time to talk with us today. Thank you so much, Cole. Thank you, Aggressor. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you guys next time for another episode of Inspired by Adventure Podcast. Bye-bye. Bye, Michelle. Bye. 
Thanks for tuning into the Inspired by Adventure podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you haven't already, please subscribe through iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. See you next time.